welcome to the managed krishi gandhi knowledge lecture series on 25th january 2022 uh, sir before inviting to uh, inviting our dg sir to introduce uh, uh, the speaker today so i would like to just provide a very brief uh, uh, brief about uh, concept of uh, krishi gandhi knowledge lecture series sir we have great leaders in the field of agriculture and uh, who achieved uh, greater successes and uh, made changes and strides in the field of uh, agriculture <clears throat> they have toiled struggled and achieved success and uh, their lifetime experiences should reach to the last mile ex uh, extension worker who's uh, working at the field level manage initiated the concept and uh, uh, invites eminent uh, professionals to share their successes and achievements during their lifetime these uh, sessions are record recorded and uh, uh, they are disseminated to all the extension functionaries in the country uh, and uh, so that uh, these extension functionaries can encourage the rural leadership in their area of work and uh, today we are fortunate to have respected dr ak singh uh, deputy director general uh, indian council of agricultural research and uh, uh, the title of the session goes as uh, agricultural extension through krishi vigyan kendras challenges and opportunities so today um, we will uh, uh, listen to dr ak singh uh, but before that i request our director general dr p chandrashekara sir to kindly introduce uh, dr ak singh thank you sir thank you dr jaya good morning to all of you uh, on behalf of uh, manage family i would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone in manage and also our colleagues from samiti and ei who are participating in this manage krishi gandhi knowledge series lecture it is my privilege to extend warm welcome to friend of manage i, I would love to call this friend of manage at ashok kumar singh deputy director general extension indian council of agriculture research uh, to this important krishi gandhi knowledge series lecture to deliver a talk on strengthening extension through krishi vigyan kendras challenges and uh, opportunities uh, before i introduce the honorable speaker uh one word about uh, krishi gandhi knowledge series lecture extension workers they live in villages work directly with the farmers they are spread across the country they take the extension challenges up front directly it is very important to refresh their knowledge regularly empower them and also enthuse them by inspiring leaderships it is not only getting inspiration in life but also in profession especially when they are handling such a challenging task at a grassroots level it's very important to inspire them with uh, you know the lifetime experiences of inspiring leaders in agricultural extension that is the very purpose of krishi gandhi knowledge series lecture it is uh, linking connecting the last mile extension worker with the outstanding extension professional on the other hand who shares their lifetime experiences so this uh, talk only limited audience will be there manage faculty and few invited people from samiti and ei the entire the talk followed by a question and answer interaction will be uh, recorded it is edited converted into film and communicated to more than a lakh extension functionaries uh, within and outside the country this is about uh, uh, krishi gandhi knowledge series lecture uh, it is my privilege to introduce our today's esteemed speaker dr ashok kumar singh received doctorate in uh, agricultural extension from uh, chandrashekar azad university of agriculture and technology kanpur 
during uh, 1991 but before that he was part of university started serving university in teaching research and extension and 2000 up to 2001 he served in all these three critical areas 2001 he took the charge of associate director of extension focused all his efforts for strengthening agricultural extension and 2005 uh, he assumed the role of uh, zonal coordinator of uh, atari uh, 2014 uh, he took the charge of adi- uh, additional director general extension in icr the same year 2014 he assumed the role of a uh, very important position of deputy director general agriculture and extension uh during 2017 to 2020 he served as a uh, director and vice chancellor of one of the prestigious institution in this country indian agriculture research institute so we all know that the role of deputy director general is very very important for strengthening agriculture and extension from uh, icr side they have very important say in strengthening the policies and programs related to agricultural extension in this country during this period uh, i would like to there is a long list of you know contribution because uh, dr ak singh is sitting in very important position but uh, i would like to highlight some of the very important uh, contributions initiatives taken by dr ak singh his contributions are very significant with respect to climate resilient agriculture farmer first program attracting and retaining youth in agriculture popularly known as arya mera gaon mera desh with all the pride all kbks get reconnected and rededicated for serving the farmers through this program harnessing pulses and oil seeds production through frontline demonstration value addition and technology incubation centers in agriculture popularly known as watika knowledge system and homestead agriculture management in tribal areas popularly known as shamta nutri sensitive agriculture resources and innovations called nari and farm innovation and resource management ict initiatives including mobile based agro advisory his uh, uh some of the very interesting contribution of course very close to manage when we launched uh, extension reforms atma program in the country uh dr ak singh associated and worked with manage very closely especially his contribution for refining the preparation and implementation of uh strategic research and extension plan that is srep is very very important and uh, his contribution with respect to it is a very futuristic idea uh, with respect to development of 151 climate smart villages uh, this is uh, very well acknowledged because uh, we are all party to climate change and adaptation and uh, extension plays very important role he talked about uh, weather smart water smart carbon smart nutrient smart energy smart and knowledge smart villages through this 151 uh, climate smart villages it is worth upscaling across the country he handled several uh, research projects independently and uh, organized you know more than uh, two dozen national and international conferences at national and international level he is also editor or chief editor of several international reputed journals and uh, it's our privilege that we are getting a precious time of dr ak singh for this talk uh, sir you are addressing a limited number today it is only for the benefit of uh, recording but otherwise the edited film will reach lakhs and lakhs of extension functionaries within and outside the country that it is our privilege i would like to extend a warm welcome to you again to deliver a talk on a role of kvks in effective implementation of extension programs opportunities and challenges thank you sir
ऑनरेबल डी जी मैनेज डॉक्टर चंद्रशेखर और ओल्ड फ्रेंड एंड हेडिंग ए वेरी प्रेस्टिजियस इंस्टीट्यूशन इन द कंट्री डॉक्टर जया हु हैज कॉन्टेक्टेड मी फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ इनिशिएटिव इज ऑल्सो आई थिंक नोन मोर देन टू डिकेट्स टू बी I find many of our colleagues who are there in manage, and they have been very closely associated with me. For me, I mean to say from my heart that my learnings, other than the university and and the ICR system, it happened mostly at manage. Working as facilitator for manage for a long period, ninety four to two thousand five. Only I joined when I see her. Then it was a limited chance for me to go out. So I confined to I see her. Before that, I think that the external exposure, what I could get get from manage, I could have definitely not got from the university system. So I find myself as a student of manage for a long period of association, learning so many new things which was never. A, can say part of the core syllabus of exchange in any of the universities on which manage was working and when i wrote a book on extension and when i many of the lessons which i learned with you i cited all those examples and part of your exercises which happens in groups so it was i opener for many of the old stall words we used to be at the helms of their there and they were acknowledging that all these things were missing from the extension system and many of still today that you bring a kind of experience from the world from different country the extension models which are happening and we try to infuse other aspects which were traditionally not there in the extension system so for that i owe to manas and greatly to all my friends who were with me in manas at that time and even today when i come to those to any one of you i feel that i am one of you so that is what i cherish for manage and continue for probably for life long for me for uh see i am an student of extension started right from the beginning in the you can say directorate of extension of the country university kanpur but there was an opportunity to work for the guiding phd students at the same time taking some classes so there was an environment in the university i also feel that icr system does a lot but in icr you are working on a one commodity mostly opportunities are not there for many of the area education can for this your experience but in the university you can go to any extent for working it's not limited to one sector but different sectors you can join and you can work so i find also it was a wonderful platform working in the university system at least for the extension person those who are from the extension discipline that is i think a very good platform to work with the universities have experience of all the aspects and then come to serve in a, you can say one community or one or two communities or one sector so whatever experiences i got and i started working with electron with electron in 2005 and uh, being in the university i broadly dealt with the you can say sitting at the directorate of extension monitoring the extension programs in 23 districts of the university area jurisdiction and then at the icr headquarters dealing with some projects and conducting some training programs so that was the activity in extension i used to do and uh, in that kbk we were also involved because we had 16 kbk why should we establish more than 10 kbk in the university with the support of icr so with that background i started and later on when i joined icr it was for one zone 75 kvk is in uttar pradesh in uttarakhand and today there are 729 kvk in the country and other than this kvk system there are other aspects also for lab to land 
initiatives which we have been doing. We have been involving ICR institutes. We are also trying to involve agriculture university also in the extension network. And I can proudly say that what it was earlier, the lab to land programs have been initiated from ICR, it has increased many fold as how ICR is doing now. Uh, coming to the KVKs, the kind of extension Krishi Vigyan Kendra are doing and what are the expectations from KVKs, what they are able to deliver and what further they can deliver and what are the limitations also with the KVK system that is very really important. See, once we look into the entire agricultural extension system in our country, we find broadly the main extension is with the development department. That is the Department of Agriculture, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare in the country, also at the state levels. Because I have made an analysis and I find there are from the from the village to the district level, maybe 200, 300 workers are there with the development department. Once we look towards the KVK, the number is hardly 16, including all the supporting staff. If we look into only those who are the core staff who could communicate with the farmers, they are hardly 10. If you include the head of the KVK and all technical assistants. So there are 10 persons who could communicate on agriculture and agricultural technology. So entirely the roles are different. Many times it is said that there is a duplication of efforts. There are many times said that why KVK doesn't assume the entire responsibility of extension in the district. And many times it is also said that why there is one KVK in a district, even parliamentary standing committee. Many times they have said that KVK should be established at each block. So that is how the expectations come. And every time we write some justification that why it should be won only at the national level. So that is how, and many times if you put up any kind of, you can say proposal, the first comment will be that whether it is a duplication of the efforts being made by the development departments and the same being done by the KBK. And often we clarify that the KBK is not the general extension. We say that it is a frontline extension. Frontline extension means something is being done for the first time. We are trying to create a model in a location and that model can be, you can say, taken Followed by the development departments and their agencies which are there in the district. So that is how we clarify that our is a frontline extension, it's not a duplication. We'll work in the newer technology, newer aspects, and then we create a models, we'll get the technology assessed in certain locations, and then we'll give that technology to the district officials. So we confine our role to that much only because we have, I said hardly 10 persons, but Further, if you look into the qualified persons who can train somebody, it is not more than seven. And at any given of time, there are not more than five, looking into 20% of vacancies. So five, six persons in a district can play a catalytic, catalytic role, but they cannot take the entire extension in the district. That is how we must perceive a KVK. And perceive in the sense that KVK brings an advantage in the district because they are connected to the research institution. And they get the technology seamlessly from the those university under whom they are working. They are able to take technology from all the ICR institutions across the country. So that is the strength, bringing technology from different parts of the country at the KVK on its own form and also getting it assessed in the farmers' conditions. Also, doing certain demonstrations on a little bit larger scale, adopting one or two villages and creating a model. And also training certain number of farmers, youth, the girls, also the extension worker in the district. So that is the, I think, role which KBK are playing. The other role which was not earlier, we have given the responsibility of diagnostic services whether it is a soil testing, even plant sample testing, to limited scale, can, if they can make it happen in the district, they can create certain, you can say, uh, a kind of map for 
uh, different kinds of deficiencies, different kinds of nutritional map in the district. And they can bring certain, you can say, DG rightly mentioned that the strategy documents which are made at the district level, often they need a kind of improvement. And most of the time we have seen that the, the, the input goes from the KVK. Even doubling farmers' income documents were prepared at the district level, the rule was that of KVK. So their role is in that direction only, making a plan for the district, identifying problems of the district, and proposing certain technological solutions for different ecosystems which we have been talking in the district itself. And probably that is where development departments should utilize the services of the KVK. We often find that responsibilities are given, but the grants, the matching grants, doesn't come from the development departments to the KVK. And uh, the one thing which we have been discussing quite elaborately, and very importantly also, that we say that there has to be a convergence. The convergence guidelines were also issued by the ministry, ICR signing together, our DG signed from your side, Secretary of Agriculture signed. Those are there in the, you can say, circulated and they are in the office. But many times we find that the convergence which is expected at the national level, there has to be joint diagnostic units, there has to be joint programs. But some places it is very good. But many places you will find that kind of convergence which is expected at the national level, that is not there. And uh, we often say that how we can create a convergence model. In the meetings here in, at, at ministry level also, when interface happens, I said that if you have got 100, 200 workers, can they be linked with the technically to the KVK, not administratively? Let it be administratively running under the ministry and their own administration, but can it be technically at least once in a quarter? Can KVK and all those development entities which are there, can they sit together and interact? We find many technology agents are posted. They are raw graduates, maybe intermediate by the state governments, and they don't have that kind of experience which KVK has got. So if you are able to connect all those, you can say the agents which are working at the block level, even the subdivisional level, and they are linked to the KVK, which used to happen when TNV system was there. When TNV system was there, there was a mechanism of fortnightly workshop, there was a mechanism of monthly workshop, but Thereafter, I think this system, which was there, a very good connect between the research and extension, has not been there. So, if we can create, manage can be play a Catholic role. That can we create a link at least for this kind of knowledge exchange between the development departments and KVKs, and at least a quarterly basis. People can come together. If they are able to come to the KVK campus, that is also not a bad idea. If everybody can come in a quarter to the KVK campus, they can see all those technology baskets, that what kind of technologies are displayed, what kind of technology models are existing in the KVK, and they can take a message for the quarter from the KVK. That next quarter, what you have to suggest to the farmers, what kind of crop, what kind of technologies, what kind of enterprises can happen, and they will be a little bit more, I mean to say. So this is my first message based on my experience, despite working for so many years and talking on convergence on every platform, this has to happen. At least this mechanism, we can come together and we can create through this interaction. I think that will be the biggest contribution from our side on the lines of getting that technology going very quickly to the farmers. I have seen with my experience that in the recent years, the flow of technology have been happening very fast. And why it is happening very fast that 
institutions are able to commercialize the technology to many of the private owners who buy the technology license and they multiply it, whether it is seed or other technology products and seeds, and they are able to sell on a, you can say, large scale. That is one aspect. But the best thing is that uh, the new technology or new varieties which are coming, they go across the country through PVKs and they spread very quickly. We have got examples also, some of the varieties like SD2967 and SD3086, covering almost 10 million hectares, two varieties only of wheat, and that too from IRIs. How quickly a technology goes, and also we know that life of a variety is not very long. Maybe you can say 10 years, 15 years, some of the varieties you also we find that MTU7029, the rice variety, Glegi8486 is still continuing in the larger part of the country, long duration rice. But at the same time, we find in the states like Haryana and Punjab, which are very promising, they are able to quickly change the varieties after five, six, seven years. And if you look into the eastern part of India, the variety replacement years, it, it takes long years, maybe 15 years, 20 years. One variety comes, it doesn't go. Even long older varieties, which were 30 years, 40 years back, you will find in Bihar, you will find in West Bengal, you will find in still. So I mean to say that extension has to orient its farmers also to go for new innovations in new technology. And that I have found the kind of orientation, uh, the kind of gene in the farmers of Haryana and Punjab is, we have got a research station of IRI at Karnal, Haryana, and they used to sell few variety seeds. And those packets are not more than two kg per packet. Two kgs of new variety seed only, because very small quantity is produced in the first year, some quintals only. And you will not believe from six o'clock in the morning, there used to be a huge queue and that opens at 10 o'clock. So all farmers from Haryana and Punjab, two, three farmers from each family will come. They will queue up, they will take the token and they will wait for their number to take those two packets or three pack, packets which will be coming for each family. But they will come with two, three. So that kind of eagerness and orientation, you will not find the Eastern part of India that somebody is so keen to take a new technology. And that is how you will find that the productivity levels are so high in Haryana and Punjab as compared to the eastern part of it. So that is how I, always, I have seen that there has to be, you can say, our all out efforts that how innovations and technology delivery can happen faster. For that, we need to orient farmers. We have to connect with them. And there are many ways of connecting with the farmers. I find that when I'm talking about the extension system, which is happening from the research system, call it frontline extension, I find many of the institutions are so smart that even the variety which is not released, they, gave to, they give to large number of farmers for demonstration at their own time. So variety is not officially released, but that variety is already there in the farmer's fields. And uh, maybe 200 farmers, 300 farmers, and after three, four years, once variety is released, already a variety is established in the field. If a genotype is working well. So that way, you will find the research system also plays a crucial role. The research institutions and research scientists also in faster delivery of technology to the farmers. And that mechanism I have seen in case of IRI in particular, that they have got very good relations with the, you can say, you know, the private people, the seed agencies, who take the, those newer varieties. And there are many of the models you will also be surprised. IRI and voluntary organization, you can say, model of extension in which they have identified different voluntary organizations in the country, maybe 40, 50, and newer varieties they are giving to them, newer seeds they are giving to them. 
Uh, that is free of cost, a smaller quantity of seed given, but advantage is that that technology goes very fast. IRI does have another one, a post office model of extension, in which what they are doing that they have identified number of post offices in the country. When they were not having that much work of post office, I think in the recent past. So this model was created and 100 post offices were closer to the KVK, they were identified and they were directly sent some seed packets. So the postman itself, he could go and he could demonstrate the technology in his own, you can say, villages and they could make it. So I mean to say that there is, there are many ways by which we can innovate in technology dissimilation. I find many of our ICR institutions, they are finding way to go with the technology. For example, IHR Bangalore, they have made a kind of connection with all our Ataris and they are identifying the districts who are potential for a particular technology they have developed. So IHR is able to send the technology across the country through KVK. So I mean to say that this is the advantage which brings and the plate by KVKs, and they are able to create a, you can say, environment for technology dissemination and passing. And also its acceptance will be fast. So I mean, because the, many of the development officials are sitting here, they are engaged in training and others. So they can be directly in connection with the KVK. But at the same time, if they are able to connect with specific research institutions, for example, there is Mushroom Institute at Solon and many others, even NDA National Dairy Research Institute at Karnal, and many specialized training courses are being organized by all these, you can see. And once we talk about the entrepreneurship development, this is the way that wherever incubation facilities are there, and Many of our ICR institutions, we have been able to create incubation facilities for the youth, those who are trained. And incubation is not for, I, I mean to say, it's not for a training program for one week or one month. It's a, you can say, a linkage and connection of the youth for that incubation center for years, maybe two years, three years, until less the youth is able to convert that small enterprise into a business entity. So those incubation centers, which have been created by many of our ICR institutions, they are the potential for bringing entrepreneurship development in the country. And that is what our development officials who are working in the field, they should look for. They should identify a youth who has got some orientation, who is willing to have certain kind of enterprise, certain kind of establishments, and is specialized actually because Youth today, if he's able to make and he is willing to make, he has to go for some in, in specialized activities. And specialized activities can happen only with the connection with the specialized institutions like many of us we are having, at least 100 ICR is having and many of the agriculture universities also, they are specialized in many activities. So finance can also play a crucial role in establishing linkage of these incubation centers which are located in the university campuses, which are located in the ICR institutions, and identifying not a large number of youth. If you can identify 10, 15 youth per district, and we can connect with these incubation centers, and we'll be able to provide a kind of, you can say, support for banking support, certain credit to that youth, I think we can make a revolution in the entire country. That is where I find another connection is required. Once the government of India started these you know, farmers producer organizations, or organizations, our secretary there and DG ICR has written to all the ICR institutions that whatever FPO is, if FPO is willing to work on, you can say, millets, mushroom, apples, or anything, post processing or even production. Research institutions of ICR will be coming forward to support. I think this platform is wonderful, and we must create an environment by which these incubators and these incubators can come together 
and they can create a change in the entire country. I hope and this is another one. Uh, the other aspect which I would like to mention when I talk about the chemical change which started in 1974 on the recommendations of Education Commission. Education Commission gave a recommendation in 1964-66 that there has to be some vocational training center for the school dropouts and those youth who are not engaged elsewhere. So this would be provided a vocational training. So that was the logic to have a KVK started in 74 in Bucheri, earlier called Pondicherry. And now it has spread across the country. I said 729 in the country. And uh, I mentioned many features of the KVK, what they are doing. But one feature is that they cre create a kind of platform of convergence also at the district level. They can create a platform of convergence. For example, whether it is cooperatives, whether it is private sector, whether it is, you can say, and development departments, all are coming to the KBK for one or the other aspects. So that platform also, KBK can work as a convergence platform for taking up technology further. And over time, there has been shift in the mandate of KBK. Started with the vocational training in 1974. Later on, more focus was on demonstrations. Later on, little bit more focus on technology assessment and refinement. Thereafter, some focus came on assessment and capacity development. Then finally, the next five years, what it is being thought of that the KBK has to work as a single window system uh, for three aspects. One is the knowledge, you can say sharing. The other is the diagnostic services. And one is the capacity development. All three aspects which are required uh, has to be dealt by a KVK. If some diagnostic services are required, if some knowledge sharing, information sharing about the district, all, really, all aspects related to agriculture, and then capacity development of all those officials, farmers, youth, women, that can happen at the KVK. So these are three diagnostic, advisory, and input kind of services can be provided from the KVK. That is what we perceive under five years. Our focus is, our another focus is that how we can connect with the East Village. That is also a pioneer, you can say, thinking from our side. We are running, M Kisan Portal Ministry is running and there are more than five crore farmers registered on that platform. And, and mostly it is KVKs who are giving advisory to those farmers, five crore plus, who are connected on that platform. But problem with that platform is that it's not two way. Only KVK experts can advise, but questions cannot be asked from the farmers. That is drawback. Ministry is also trying to change the system in the coming two, three years. It will be a chain platform, more you can say participation of private sector also. You'll find cooperatives are also joining. ICR will be also joining and a huge money is also being invested by Ministry of Agriculture. ICR will play a crucial role as a technology partner on that platform also has been played in the MPSAN portal. But at the same time, ICR has come up with one solution, Kisan Sarke, because once when ICR was being reviewed, Honorable Prime Minister mentioned that advisories should not be on a push basis. Why you are pushing advisories to the farmer? Let them ask the questions. And only then responses should be given by the ICR scientists and all. So we have launched a platform, Kisan Sarthi. We are trying to connect at least five, 10 farmers from each village in the country. That is what we are expecting. 50, 60 lakh farmers in the entire country will join that platform. And we will simply ask the farmers request that if you have got any question, any kind of feedback, you can give on this platform. It's not a kind of one-way messaging from all sides, but basically it will be demand-driven and questions which are coming from field. Only that will be answered by the connected KVKs. And if not solved by KVKs, it can be given by the concerned research institutions. 
calls can be diverted. So broadly, the ICT platform we are trying to create, we have also created a number of mobile apps, almost 175 with us on different commodities. They are also, you can say, aggregated at one platform. But farmers say that why you are having so much of, you can say, mobile apps, it becomes very difficult for us to go for different mobile apps and our, you can say, mobiles are also not able to, you can say, download all those mobile apps. So there are certain concerns because technology is also growing and accordingly and systems will grow. And we'll make further that how by just having one uh, mobile app, they will be able to get information on different topics. At the same time, the specialized services, if somebody is requiring, and if somebody is willing to work on only one or two commodities, why he will be going for different mobile apps? So that aspect is also, innovations are happening. We are also trying to make it agriculture as such, is technology savvy and we have said many times that all those, you can say, IoT systems are blockchain technologies, you can say precision agriculture, all these should happen. And there is a, you can say, focus on us also, that can we create certain models which are not only climate, climate smart, but they are digitally smart also. Can we can create certain villages which are precision agriculture villages? Can we know, name those villages? That all those technological instruments, drones and others are working in villages. And we have started working certain projects we have sanctioned to many of the institutions we are working. And hopefully in one or two years, we'll be able to give certain models that how is smallholder farmers, they will be able to share drones together because operating drones on a bigger farm is easier and there are many crops and many small holder farms. So all those modalities are being worked out from the research and also government has issued certain guidelines and this is where we have to work. The other aspect which I would like to mention that the extension in the coming era, we say that it has to be commercially viable and economically profitable to farmers. We also find that there are a large number of farmers in our country. There are also experiences in our, of other countries that land holdings which used to be splitted, later on it gets merged and it becomes a larger land holding. The experiences of developed countries like that only, that the land holdings are growing there because Fewer people are interested in agriculture and people are living in agriculture. In our country, scenario has been that it has been splitting, but at the same time, you will find now many of the villages that though owners are many, but cultivation of land is doing one, done by only few people who are there in the village. Maybe everybody having ownership of land, but maybe very fewer people are actually cultivating those land. Because migrations are happening and land holdings are smaller. So people are shifting to the urban basis and land holdings are given on certain rent and other arrangements which are there locally. So agriculture in the longer run, you will find that in India also will change and land holdings for agriculture will enhance also. What is my own perception that maybe by 2050 land holdings, what we are seeing today very small, fragmented, maybe a larger land holdings at that time because people will be shifting from agriculture to other. Today, people have got attachment to the land and they don't want to leave, but time will come and they will shift into the urban basis, they will go for other enterprises, other income related activities, and they will shift. So maybe at that point of time, agriculture will be different. As of now, since land holdings are very small, and the challenge is that, that how it can be economically profitable. We have seen in the research institutions, there are one acre models, there were one hectare models. In PUSA IRI itself, I got developed two models when I was there. One is a one acre model, which is 
There is no farm pond, only horticulture and agriculture based mushroom is linked as income. And we find that from one acre, almost 2.5 lakhs per year, it can be earned. Economic earnings can be made, excluding whatever we are taking eatables from that for a family of poor or five. So after consuming whatever is to be consumed as a vegetable and also grains from that field by a family of four and five, additionally 2.5 lakhs can be earned by a farmer. I think this is also a good proposition for the poor farmers and looking into the average income of the farmers in our country, which is hardly six to seven thousand per family, so quite low. So that is one I have seen. For one hectare, we have seen that it can go up to four lakhs. From one hectare, where a fish pond is there, one or two animals are there. So maybe from one hectare, a person will be able to, after taking whatever eatables is required from a farm, from a for a family of a small, four lakhs can be earned from. Even beyond, also, if somebody is putting a little bit more. Energy. We have also seen that from the small at the farmer's field, I have personally seen from 2,000 square feet, uh, not 2,000 square meters, uh, a farmer was able to make four lakhs having all this capsicum and other vegetables from 2,000 square meters. So I mean to say that there are options and people can go for it. We have also seen that Integrated farming systems can be quite profitable. From our area experiences, when we started in 100 districts through KVKs and we started on the economic enterprise, we say that we will not do for the traditional agriculture crops and others through area program, only through economic enterprises, whether it is mushroom, whether it is poultry, whether it is honey production. And I could find personally by calculating all those data which we got from the fields, 12,000 additionally from these economic activities, economic enterprises, a family can earn. What he was able to earn from already existing uh, crop-based activity. So if somebody, and I think that is the best way for doubling farmers' income, what we have been aspiring since long, how it can be doubled. If you can include one additional in economic enterprise with one farmer, I think we'll be very easily able to double the farmer's income. Include some poultry activity, include some mushroom related activity. So even vegetable related activity and doubling farmer's income can easily act. So that is what we have to see that can we create clusters in different areas where people can go for one I think one enterprise that is also very crucial. In a village, if 20, 30 commodities are taken up, it cannot be a marketable surplus. If two, three villages come together, they start working on one commodity, they produce a little bit higher amount of produce, any trader will be interested to come. And that is what we have seen from our experiences. There are certain farmers who are growing carrot around Delhi, and one farmer takes the lead but he's not doing himself. He's doing for two, three, four villages. All are growing carrot. And all those kinds of, you can say, harvesting machines, the farmers have been able to design themselves. And they are sending to Delhi. They have got the reputation in the market. And they will produce the best quality of carrots. And they will provide around the year. So that is another thing. What I find that we have to identify the communities we have to identify the cluster of villages to work on one or two commodities. And looking into that experience, only government of India has come up with one district, one product model. And basically it's one product doesn't mean only one product, maybe two, three products also, because many times one product doesn't work and we have to have two, three products also. So that government of India is trying, but we have to create, as a, you can say, entity working together, that how we can create this kind. Uh, one more aspect which is very much related to KVK, and this 
we call that the KBK is an innovation platform. That whatever innovations are happening, KBK takes it first and goes and you can say with the you can say participation of all the stakeholders, KBK makes it to show that this technology is able to work in a particular situation. That's why we call that the KBK is an innovation platform. An innovation platform in the sense that it has to work not only by the scientists, but by all those stakeholders. It is a farmer, well, the development officials all coming together and assessing a technology that how that technology is working and then take it forward. I think these kind of models, innovation platforms are not only in our country, but even European Union when I recently visited. European Union was talking about the innovation platform. And when they narrated it was nothing other than what we are working in the KBK system. They were also saying that innovation platforms, they were very clear in their idea that researches are not required every day, but such innovations are required every day. People can come together, they can look for various options of the same technology. And we also find that the technology which is recommended by the research institution is not accepted as such by the farmer. Even a variety comes with a certain kind of sowing time, certain kind of spacing, but once it goes to the farmer's fields, farmer on their own, you can say, experiences and also working in the field, they will definitely change something in that. The way the research institutions have recommended, but looking into their own situations they make. So probably these innovation platforms which are there in the KV case have to be more activated with the participation of development officials and also the lead farmers, if they can come together. The other aspect which we have been discussing is the farmer to farmer extension. And uh, we find that the many of the farmers, and I have got a logic behind saying this, Many times we say that the farmer to farmer extension is a source and SSO data also says that most credible source is farmer to farmer extension. But the, who is the farmer who is training other farmers? That's very crucial. And if we made a study, International Food Policy Research Institute made a study recently and they came to a conclusion that the one farmer trained by a KBK is able to influence 30 farmers. So they say that maybe the figures which is trained by the KVK is 15 lakhs per year, maybe lesser, but those 15 lakhs, they are influencing another, you can say 30 times more farmers. And same was the, you can say, uh, assessment by them in terms of demonstration also. If you are able to conduct a good demonstration, in the farmers' fields, it also creates a kind of uh, peer group, those who are convinced with that technology and they are able to take that technology. So the institutions like Manage and also EIs and also uh, Samitis, their role is to go with the training programs, go with the technology and try to create certain peer groups, certain clusters who later on said to be farmer to farmer extension. And many times the credit of those research institutions, those centers, those KBKs, those summities are not reflected. And we say that it's a farmer to farmer extension. But who are the first farmer who are able to create a network of the farmer? So I mean to say that on this philosophy, we have to work further, farmer to farmer extension. Many of the things we have been talking about, it has to be market-led extension, it has to be participatory extension, and all these have got purpose, I mean to say. If we call certain terminology, it gives a focus for our own ideas that uh, where we have to orient. We started to manage, mooted this idea of market-led extension, and many are following it, that Ultimately, what is needed? Ultimately, we need a market which could give a better price to the farm. So that becomes the purpose. And uh, once we talk about market-led extension, means those who are in the extension, 
they will be oriented towards marketing they will be oriented towards the pricing they will be able to convince the farmers on those lines that what for you are working in agriculture what for you are toiling in your field and accordingly we have to make it uh, so we have to create different kinds of scenarios and we have to come with different kind of, kinds of ideas and that is how we can go with the technology the other thing what we have seen the development departments uh, those who are working in the field mostly they are engaged in the input distribution and other aspects technology aspects sometime go in the background and when i was talking about the replacement of varieties and crops which is not happening diversification is not happening faster which for which the country is looking for only because there is not much focus on technology once the states like haryana how they are trying to focus on new technologies how they are orienting their farmers other states if they can come forward and they start orienting that what is the value of a new technology then farmers will be going very quickly towards a new technology development departments for a new technology what is required if a variety is developed it has to come to in the seed chain of the state government so the state government has got large number of farms their own seed agency the production systems and they should quickly identify the best of the varieties best of the technologies bring into the seed chain and give it to the farmers so many of the states are lacking in this kind of approach even seed policy in, in the north eastern states you will find it's not very robust they don't have seed production systems they don't have the storage facility so i mean to say that all these technological aspects are very very important when we are trying to make agriculture modern whether it is a precision agriculture whether it is a market led extension whether it is profitable extension it has to be all looked into in the technology perspective um, recently one idea is coming natural farming and manage has been given the responsibility to for training master trainers and that is also an idea see outrightly we cannot say that something which is being mooted is, is not correct many discussions have already happened at the national level organic farming natural farming all these are the you can say systems which were done traditionally now we have to have scientific evidences and accordingly we have to move forward recent trials which have been conducted indicate that initially seed levels go down but it can stabilize when we talk to a soil scientist they say that the soil property do not change in 40 50 years time if you talk to a scientist after growing our crop they will say that the the basic you can say nutrient base in the soils doesn't change very quickly if additionally you are not giving maybe the crop yields will be lower and the crop is not not able to extract you can say existing nutrient from the soil but it needs to be long term trials when we are talking that natural farming how long the trials should be conducted to actually identify that how much if we are not putting additionally something the plant will mine the nutrients from the soil and then nutrient base will be going down in the soil so the researchers say that it requires very long trials 40 years 50 years to actually determine that a crop is you can say and uh, depleting all the nutrient base in the soil i mean to say that there may be short term research but there may be long term research also but nonetheless looking into the environmental issues looking into the quality production the organic farming and natural farming are very important for a country like us which has got huge population we need the nutritious food and that's why we have to a mix of all these methods whether it is a modern method whether it is organic farming method or natural farming method and we should conduct research also we should have scientific base also for all these and icr has started already trials on 22 locations for this so many innovations 
which were being done earlier, they are now coming again in the forefront and many social groups are talking about. Worldwide also people talk about uh, regenerative agriculture. Let us see, when I visited uh, Netherlands recently, they said that they have got the private extension. I mean to mention private extension, we have been talking since long. But there may be certain drawbacks of private extension also, which many times we say that why it is not in our country. And we defend that since our farmers are very poor, land holdings are very small, they won't be able to afford the private extension. But they were saying, because they are paying to the private agency to run the private extension, government is paying. But private extension always does for the profit. And they say that our natural resources are depleting because private extension doesn't focus on the natural resource management issue in their any kind of advisories and approaches. And that is where we are lacking. We want to reduce the number of animals because huge carbon emissions are happening because of large number of animals, which our size of lands cannot sustain. And private is not listening. So we are also thinking that some part of advisory which are related to the country's, you can say, growth and natural resource safeguards, we must start ourselves also. So I think backtracking, going to the what it was earlier. So I mean to say that the private extension, the cooperative extension, what we have been talking about, and they have also got the future. And in our country also, those farmers which are doing on a larger scale, they don't bother about the public or private from wherever they have to get the technology, they will go, they will pay, they will also have the consultants. So that's why we always com communicate that our is a multi-agency extension system. Everybody has got a chance to play. Being a large country, being a large number of farmers, everybody has got the scope to work in our country. And that is the idea on which we will carry forward in the future also. Hopefully, I have taken a little bit more time than expected, but I don't know. These such kind of talks which are uh, given by Honorable DG, I think it's very difficult to end the story once you start talking about extension and what in the system. But at the same time, I will mention that uh, there are certain areas, concerns. I will take four or five minutes more on which I will summarize. And many of the points I have already discussed was also, but quickly I will say that, uh, just to summarize, that we have to look for the, the skill development and skill-oriented, you can say, extension, because general trainings and others we have been doing and we have seen the advantages and disadvantages also. So. That is where I call about incubation centers also, that we have to incubate. We are trying to build such incubation centers in KBK also, not at many places, but some places we are trying to make. The other important aspect is, uh, we have got a database of the farmers at the national level. At least in the M Kisan, in the, you can say, uh, Kisan Samman Nidhi, the government has been able to make a database of farmers. Those database has to be used by extension also, because then we can give, you can say, specific advisory to the farmers. A specific, since we have got the specific information, how much land holdings, what kind of uh, crops they are growing. So that we'll be able to utilize if our extension system can utilize that database, and that will be another good thing. And one, I mentioned also that how we can use the technology institutions in the extension more. And I gave many options that how FPUs can be linked, how various skill-oriented programs can be linked with the technology institutions of ICR and the university. The other aspect I talked about the agri-entrepreneurship and also orienting youth, and that can also majorly happen through our system. To KVK, we have given a responsibility of identifying 150 to 200 youth per, per district in those area districts and make them entrepreneurs. 
200, if you am able to make in a district, they will be influenced the entire district. That is what we assume and that we are trying. The other aspect which we have been lacking, the country as such has been lacking about the post-harvest, you can say, systems. Micro-food enterprises and others, they are not there the many. Government has come up with a big scheme, micro-food enterprises. Government is willing to make, I think, two lakh uh, micro-food enterprises, a small scale at the map and chat and village level. That also to be tapped, that money which has come up for coming five, 10 years, we should also come with our systems that how those opportunities which are there in terms of funding, in terms of support, that can be taken up and properly established at the ground level. So in the form of FPOs, we should come with the different kinds of cooperative models. And that is what we have been talking about. There has been one successful model of Amul, very smaller, you will find other cooperatives also successful, but not many. But looking into FPO, which are coming in large number, can this model sustain? Because often, which is the drawback of our system of our country, that often we change the approach itself. We go for one approach five years, another five years, it will be altogether different. So can this FPO approach which has come up, can it sustain? Can we work together to sustain this model so that farmers can come together? We say that FPO is one model where aggregation can happen, where marketing can happen, where input management can happen itself by the group. And group will be able to manage every aspect of agriculture production, marketing and pricing, whatever. So I think this is the, I think, look into looking environment the best model. From the era of FIG and SIG has come, we have come to a level of FPOs. I have seen in many developed countries also that there are large NGOs, large farmers organizations, which are in, which are able to influence the country for policy making. In Europe, you will find many countries, they have got very large farmers organizations. And if you go to their offices, it will be simply as like a government big, you can say platforms, houses, all those, you can say committee rooms, big halls, and they are able to influence the government policy. And for many of the extension services, farmers are coming to those organizations. For example, if taxation has to be given by a farmer, he will not go to a taxation agency. He will come to a farmer organization that how I can safeguard my interest, how can I save my money, and that advice he will take from the farmers. So I mean to say that these farmers are licensed in the later stages. Can they be, you can say, advisory entities also to other farmers? At least for their own group, they can be, but for other groups also. If the government is proposing 10,000 FPOs, I will be very happy if 5,000 good FPOs are able to function at the national level and they sustain for a longer time. And we, as a, you can say, research institution or you can say training institution, we should come forward and support all those to remain there for a longer basis. Uh, the other aspect which we have been talking, natural farming, organic farming, indigenous breeds and indigenous technologies, we have just discussed about all these. ICT we have also discussed. So I think these are major areas on which are the major approaches on which we have to look into. But finally, I will say that the extension has to look for two, three areas. One is that uh, we say one aspect, but we forget other aspects. But now the time has come and we have matured enough that we should talk about a extension system which is sustainable for a long term basis. An extension system which can look into the knowledge base acquisition that how we can sustain our natural resources. It's not a profit motive only. The extension which can sustain our natural resources, the extension which can gain income sustaining the natural resources, and the extension which can be, you can see the profit oriented in the years to come, which can make a farmer 
you can say relying on his own form can he can he create a you can say not alone looking into the present land holdings one farmer if you look into it will be difficult to sustain him until unless we create a cluster of villages cluster of farmers together and that is how we find many of the countries like vietnam and others they are also holding having similar similar smaller holding but the farmers are coming together they are aggregating their produce same variety same crop they are able to aggregate they are able to market to other countries same quality of production so i think that way extension has to look into that how we can go for a cluster based production systems in which people can come together they can start producing together a similar kind of product and then i think there will be saving of inputs for them there will be saving of labor for them there will be saving for different kinds of exercises they are going to make for the same work all farmers are working but together in groups they can solve their problems and they can earn more we have seen certain examples are there in our country also if you go to hyderabad you will find that many of the farmers are producing seeds hybrid seeds together and they are able to make money so such models are there in crop sector also it's not that if you go to maharashtra you will find that in great case of grapes and say oranges they have got big farmers or maraisons and they are getting their interest protected so those models which are already existing these models need to be replicated and so external models we cannot borrow from other countries and implement in our country that is what i can say at this juncture maybe i might have taken a little more time but i am extremely thankful to dg manage and all those colleagues of fine at manage who are working a pioneer work in the entire country connecting and different departments different ministries and different state governments together at one platform one message you are able to spread and in the recent time manage has also established a close linkage with icr we have got the mou with icr and with that mou you are entitled to go to any icr institution and take whatever you can say willing to take from them so with these words i am extremely grateful to all of you Dr. Chandra Shekhar, in particular, on the DG, Dr. Jaya, all our colleagues who are here, requested me to be part of this. I am really grateful to all of you for listening. I don't know how much I was able to communicate. Maybe fragmented one here and there because it was not very structured one. I was said to talk freely, not on any kind of transparency and slides. So I spoke. extempore maybe at some points maybe beneficial for all those who are working in the extension system and i say that extension is a dynamic system other than the research that is what i found working in the research system in one stereotype you can work in the research but you cannot work in one stereotype in the extension system you have to innovate every day every season other season every year and that is where the success lies so thank you very much grateful to all of you thank you thank you sir thank you very much for taking us through the journey of uh, how kvks and agricultural uh, research system uh, can uh, benefit the farmers sir uh, can we take few questions and uh, yes. questions yes sir yeah i request all participants to uh come out with some questions relevant to this topic yeah we have uh, uh, uh representatives of uh, officials of ea and uh, samitis also you know we encourage them to uh, ask the questions take some clarifications uh, namaskar sir yes uh, sir namaskar yes. main pannagar uttarakhand jv pant university pannagar se main baat kar raha hu डॉक्टर ए के सिंह सर को हम लोग बहुत पहले से सुनते आ रहे हैं इनफैक्ट मेरा कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं है परंतु डॉक्टर ए के सिंह सर की के लेक्चर और उनके एक्सपीरियंसेस हमेशा सुनना हम लोग को अच्छा लगता है और बहुत ही अच्छे एग्जांपल के साथ 
और जो भी आप कह रहे थे आईएआरआई के एग्जांपल कोट कर रहे थे या इवन जब आप सर जेडपीडी रहे शुरू में यूपी उत्तराखंड देख रहे थे हम लोग अल्मोड़ा में पोस्टर थे सब तो आपका विजिट हुआ करता था और आप जो कुछ भी उस समय जो शेयर करते थे अपने एक्सपीरियंसेस निश्चित रूप से हम सभी जो लोग एक्सटेंशन सिस्टम में केवी के सिस्टम में काम कर रहे हैं हमेशा से बहुत इन्फॉर्मेटिव और यूजफुल होता है और आज भी सर थैंक यू आप बहुत ही सुंदर और इन्फॉर्मेटिव लेक्चर के लिए थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच यस सर सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग सर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर वेरी एनलाइटनिंग सेशन सर आई हैव जस्ट वन क्वेश्चन मे बी यू हैव टॉक्ड इन डिटेल अबाउट केवी के Uh, but sir uh, from the beginning we have been seeing this concern i think this is not a new question for you but still i would like to just know what is the uh, development that uh, you know, that is taking place in order to uh, make the kvks more vibrant with respect to their contribution on the research aspects sir because you mentioned that the vocational training programs to fld's to technology assessment and refinement and recently the supply of quality planting material the roles and responsibilities of kvks are changing too too often so how the kvks are responding to these uh, diverse challenges and uh, how they are able to manage all these with uh, limited manpower sir you yourself said that you know they are constrained by limited manpower who can directly interact with farmers so probably uh, what are the uh, new measures or policy uh, directions through which the kvks are being repositioned to address the farmers challenges sir see broadly i said that the roles and responsibilities of kvk have been based on trainings the capacity development what we have been talking about and at the same time technology assessment demonstration which is happening kvk have got farm also 150 acre farm is said to be there and that is the advantage with the kvk so they are producing seeds they are producing planting materials and once you train or you can educate something if you are having some technology product also you can say that the technology adoption and technology communication will happen faster so kvk works on that philosophy only that it can advise but at the same time if it is advising for a particular variety and if that seed they are able to produce on their own farm and give it to the farmers i think that is one way or maybe a better way to communicate advising something simply and if it is not available probably people will be searching here and there and they won't be so that is what holistically we say that it has to be advised it has to produce some technological products newer variety newer technologies they also have to showcase all those technologies on their own campus and also they have to assess those technologies in the farmers community they have to create a technology basket at kvk campus if some visitor is coming if he is visiting a technology basket many varieties are displayed Five, six, seven, having same crop duration, same, you can say ecosystem on which they can be planted. So farmers will be able to choose one or two technologies, one or two varieties out of those which are displayed there. So KVK provides that platform. Coming to you can say the broad base and ever changing requirements from the KVKs. See, from our side, it is not changing much. We can find to this level only, but at the same time we will find that there is a lot of pressure from other ministries that you do something for me they say do do this for us and then there becomes very difficult for kvk to look into we have given that authority to kvk itself that how much you can do there are certain assignment which we take to, from the department of agriculture and we find that it's very fine we are almost sister organizations and uh, in pulses if in any national priority programs are coming like ilc pulses you will not believe 3.5 lakh demonstrations on pulses were conducted by kvk and or were funded by dsc so we are happy to contribute to in the priority areas 
but there are other other works also which are non priority non related to agriculture also sometimes they come and since they are coming you can't say no but you cannot take that on a very large scale so that is how we are trying to sustain that we can't say no many times but we also cannot take and hamper our own activities because of those activities so that is how we are training our kvk that how we they can cope the pressure what has to be done and what not has to be done in the recent past there is a lot of pressure on creating awareness and you can say disseminating information on various aspects and every week you will find that some activity comes from one ministry or other in azadi ka amrit mahotsav also everybody is celebrating and everybody wants that the kbk should attend that program along with farmers so if they start doing probably they won't find any day to go to the, to the field to work for their own activities that is how things are in our country people say that this is the only organization of government of india at the district level let us utilize it but we have to be also wise enough that how we have to cope with this how much we can take and how much we cannot take many times we say that this is not related to us we cannot do but at the same time which are related to us in that also how much we have to take that decision is there with us and also in the kvk they have become wiser also over time that what they have to take and what they have not to take that is what i can say man power of course is not that much i said that 5 6 percent are there and their role is to work in a limited you can say way on a new technology creating a new platform a new innovation platform new variety new seeds and also hand holding the development departments in terms of giving technology in terms of training their man power by which they can multiply their efforts that is how we are trying and we will continue to do on that but there are resource crunch also over time it has not increased number of kvk have increased but resources have not increased that is another factor and if somebody is funding other day there was a meeting in niti ayog and recently we organized 250 mailas for jal shakti mantralay on our own funding i think 5 6 crore was in invested by icr so niti ayog member was also mentioning why you are doing work for others but many times you cannot avoid you have to spend your own money for others and many such initiatives are also coming that how much you will invest on this activity of related ministry we are already concerned but people are knowing that this is an important institution at the district level and it has got our minister all the time says that the kvk have got confidence of farmer and i think that is the biggest attribute what we have as of thank you yeah good afternoon everyone myself bharti madan from punjab samiti speaking here sir uh, thank you sir for this informative session i have the, just one uh, query sir as you said that uh, kvk is act as a platform for innovation uh and you also talked about the natural farming my question is about indigenous technical knowledge our farmers have already uh, some indigenous knowledge with them so how the kvks are uh, going for the conservation of that knowledge any documentation so that uh, along with the scientific uh, uh, knowledge we must uh, not lose our indigenous knowledge sir you are uh, either yeah, that's, that's see in the recent past four five years i think 7000 plus the germ plasma of different varieties rice and others which were which are being grown you can say maybe the tribal belts and others we have collected and we have got all those registered with the plant variety farmers right authority so all those germ plant we are collecting and we are giving to the plant variety authority and they are conserving it which will be utilized for further research at the same time kvk identify indigenous technologies also we have also said that if they find certain value in certain itks they can validate also involving research scientists involving research scientists involving farmers and involving themselves they can conduct certain 
validation trials also on IT. So that is how we are trying to preserve. You will be also happy to know that ICR has brought out seven volumes of IT kits. Seven volumes of IT kits. And recently also we brought out these what 7,000 plus I'm talking about. All the details of all the journal plan which have been characterized, they have been also published. And they are with the ICR. Thank you. It's a very nice comprehension of uh, the talk given by a honorable speaker. Uh, sir, again, I would like to uh, thank you on behalf of uh, Manage, especially for your valuable time. I know how uh, busy you are in spite of that. You took a very peaceful piece of one and a half hour and dedicated to this without any disturbance. So we are thankful to you. Of course, uh, your talk was really enriching our knowledge, but more than that, it gave a lot of clarity. In fact, you talked about uh, district level problems and district level solutions, uh, Indian problems and Indian solutions. It has to be sorted out there only. And that talks about more a sustainable extension system. And it came from your heart. Uh, it came out of your experiences, but you talked out of your experience, giving examples of institutions, different timelines and the association of farmers. So it, uh, you know, sounded very familiar and interesting for all the years in manage. Thank you very much for this uh, very interesting uh, talk. Of course, we see grave a lot of you know hopes in uh, KB case uh, because they are giving knowledge, they are giving diagnostic services, and uh, they are also involved in uh, capacity development activities to limited extent. And uh, of course, you highlighted about uh, how KBK can bring convergence in the policies, agriculture policies and plans at a district level. We have several uh, plans actually, including our SREP and uh, by NABARD, uh, by uh, many plans are there. So how KBK can play a role in uh, bringing convergence and the most important, uh, the success of KVK depends on uh, connecting well with a low district extension functionaries. So that even though we have Atma KVK uh, agreement uh, between uh, DAC and uh, uh, there, uh, but in letter and spirit that has to be implemented. So when Atma and KVK work together, I think uh, two plus two will not be four, uh, the impact will be more than that. So that is one area. And uh, conceiving uh, KVK as a concept nursery. We have scientists, we have land. Why can't we try several uh, uh, new ideas, establishing innovation system? So that whenever uh, farmers come, extension workers come there, they see something interesting and innovative, uh, get, uh, go back with uh, fresh ideas. So whether it is uh, FPO, whether it is uh, promoting agripinners or food processing, probably the land available with the KVK with the help of scientific backstopping can serve as a technology park where it also provides self-employment opportunity for agribusiness. Uh, that will be uh, more interesting. Uh, of course, uh, you have covered uh, almost all the areas. We have not left anything within the short span of time. Uh, of course, KVK can also play a very important role in national level massive digital literacy campaign. I think when we talk about many IT applications, unless a farmer knows how to uh, handle his mobile, uh, probably all of our uh, efforts will be uh, floating on the clouds. So you, you, in order to take the benefit maximum, it's a digital literacy campaign is very important. KBK is playing very important role. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, we are greatly benefited uh, and enlightened by your uh, talk and we look forward for your uh, guidance and support in future also. So thank you very much for your uh, time. Okay. Thank you very much.